Hello, I am back today with a new product from Messy Mansion and I get super excited anytime any uh, new kind of product comes out that I get to play around with and that can make my nail art a million times cooler and I think this is one of those products. Okay, so this is their stencil kit and it comes with one texture plate and I'll explain all of this here in a minute and three stencil plates. So the idea is that each of these stencils you put on top of an image and stamp through it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about and I'll show you why that's cool. So before I do that, let me show you what is on each of these. So on this one you've got this beautiful mosaic image, you've got uh, a rose shape, you've got hearts, this art deco fan kind of image, um, some swirls, we've got the art deco -y rainbows, we've got uh, this beautiful almost petrofog image, we've got some flowers, on this one, we've got like stones or textured earth, a web, some dragon scales, beautiful butterfly wing, uh, some like, stones are almost like a giraffe pattern or it could be a leopard pattern, depending. Beautiful seashell, beehive, uh, and uh, zebras. And then on, and then on the last one, we've got uh, a little bit more geometric. So uh, this sort of brick pattern, hound's tooth. A, a zigzaggy kind of pattern. This is like almost like a basket weave. Uh, we've got some waves. We've got these um, lines with the square in the center. Then these um, the chevroning lines pointing to each other and this lovely starburst kind of pattern. Uh, on the texture plate, we've got, uh, this is just an empty palette and I'm going to show you some things that you can do with that. This also is an empty palette where you put your polish, um, but there are some scalloped edges here, so you can do some scallop designs on your nail. Um, and these are your, your, your texture sections, and again, I'm going to explain this to you. So we've got like hashtag things here, some chevrons, and there are wider areas and narrower areas. Some little um, dots like uh, Chad punch cards. Uh, this is like cracked earth, gorgeous, I love that. And um, little um, different kind of like hashtagies that are more like pluses. This has a feel for like dragon scales, pointy dragon scales to me. Um, this is kind of like bark. I love this with the little, um, the lines with the little flowery sort of things in there. And this is really grunge textured lines and then you've got some scribbles. Okay, so, so the basic primary use for this is uh, if you've ever heard of double process stamping where you essentially take the uh, texture of one stamp and combine it with the shape of another, um, well if you've heard of it you also know, you'll know it's really really difficult. It's difficult to do at all and it's extremely difficult to do well. Well basically what this does is it allows you um, a very quick very easy way of getting that same look. So for example um, and I'm going to show you this in action, but I want to make sure that I'm making myself clear first. So for example, let's say I want to get some texture onto these hearts. So let's say that I want um, this cool texture there on these hearts. Well, this is what that is going to end up looking like. Okay, and then let's say I want some chevrons on that cool heart, on those cool hearts. That's what that's going to end up looking like and then I did this on a different plate. So um, can you use this with other plates? Yes, you absolutely can, and I am going to uh, give you some tips about doing that. But the plate I used for that was Symmetrica 01, and I used this image right here. So you can actually see the little diamonds in there in those chevrons. All right, but before I get in too far into that, that's the basic idea. So you're using your shape, and then you're going to get whatever pattern on your shape that you want is going to come from the plate that you stamp with. All right, so how do you do that? Let me do a demonstration for you. For my demonstration, I'm going to use the Messy Mansion Carbon Stamper. Um, this is the one they recommend and they use in their videos. So, so I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I was using the exact tools that they recommend. Um, although I have found that you can do it with other stampers as well. Like this is a sticky stamper. If you prefer a non-sticky stamper or a more marshmallow stamper, you can definitely do that. I have found that with the clear stampers, it's a little bit more difficult because um, with the clear stampers, you have to kind of roll a little bit faster and with this, you know, you're really wanting to make sure that you're getting through the layer of this. It can be done. I have done it. 
but I'm just saying it may be a little bit harder, so practice a little bit with this first before you do it. Okay, so, so let's see how this flower would look with this texture pattern here. And I am going to use Blue You A Kiss just because this shows up really well on camera. So you are going to cover this with polish. You want to be generous, I mean, especially when you're first doing it, you want to be generous because remember you are, um, you are picking up through another template. Okay, you're going to also want to work a little bit. You're going to want to keep try to keep it fast. So, you're going to scrape. I say use a gentleish scrape. Put your template in place and then just stamp over it like you normally would and you're going to get that rose with those lines. And that's how that looks. So in this case, I think that combination doesn't necessarily look end up looking like a rose. But how beautiful is that for background texture? I think that's just gorgeous texture. All right, let's try another one. Okay, I want to try this pattern here with this beehive stencil here. Plenty of polish, gentle scrape. That might have been too gentle a scrape, we'll find out. Nope, looks gorgeous. Oh. And showing it to you, I got a little bit of drying up on the top, but look at how gorgeous that is with the texture in there. Oh, so awesome. Stamp some cute little bee over that. That would be gorgeous. Okay, so you get the basic idea there, but there's more that you can do with this. So, so what I've shown you so far has just been one pass. Now, one of the cool things about this is, is that once you lift up the stencil, you have the pattern of your stencil is now left in the polish you left behind. So, you might have noticed when I showed you um, the hearts with the texture, this is what happened when I lifted off the stencil and then went across it a second time with a different stamp. So now I've got this whole different look here of the textured background with the hearts in the middle. So imagine, for example, that I had a pale pink polish and this was a slightly darker pink so that I had these, these hearts standing out and then I stamped a message over the top of it. How cute would that be? And depending on uh, which combinations you're using you can get um, really grungy looks. So these are kind of obviously hearts but when you get uh, when you use some of the more abstract kind of um, stencils you can get a much more grungy look. And one of the cool ways to do that is with this which I said is kind of like a palette for your polishes. So let me show you a little bit of the magic that is this. Okay so you put in your polish here now, on the Messy Mansion video, they scrape it. Um, I personally don't, you don't really actually even need to scrape this one because you're not so much scraping anything off. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's try this one just for fun. And you're going to have to work kind of fast to get this to work. So I have two stampers standing by so I can do the two phases of this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my polish and then in the Messy Mansion video they show you to scrape. I'm going to not scrape because I actually, you can get different effects whether or not you scrape it first or not, but I'm going to not scrape. I'm just going to lay my template down. All right, so. And it took a little while to get that, but you get the point. That's your first original stamp, but here's where the magic happens, right? Check that out. And now you get this grungy, batiki kind of look. Um, might be too late to transfer, but let's see. Look at how cool that is, okay? So now if I had worked faster, my first image would have been pristine and I could have used it that way. Um, but here is where the magic is because you've already gone over it once and you've kind of smushed that polish. Now you get this really cool effect. 
and like I said you can do it on the other texture um, areas as well so um, so like right after I did um, that one I went ahead and did a second swipe but that's not all you can do with this okay so check this out this time I'm gonna have you have three stampers and you're gonna see why um, the first stamper it doesn't matter what kind of stamper it is normally when you put polish if you want to get multiple colors in a scrape um, you're limited on what you can do because when you scrape the colors off your plate of course it's going to create a line in whichever direction you scrape so that's where the fun part of the fun comes in this is you don't necessarily have that limitation so take a look at this and again you're going to want to work fast especially if you want to get a double image out of this Okay, check out how pretty that is. All right, then we're gonna put this over here. We're gonna stamp, or, and then we're gonna get one image from that, but then look, we can get another gorgeous image here. So this is gorgeous texture, gorgeous color. I'm working fast, I'm working on camera. So these are not perfect, but you get the idea. And of course that first one didn't transfer well, but you get the idea there. And just to prove to you, when I was working um, off camera and I had a little bit more control, uh, here's one I did with the rose and I did this with a couple of um, two different pinks. And then there's the second image I did, so a lot of texture there, but look at how beautiful that is. And then here's another version I did this I did with pink and red and then here's the the grunge after image and this one I was working really fast um, this was my first attempt actually so I did it with the pinks and here's the hearts and then um, because I was working so quickly uh, and I didn't I didn't go over this as heavily as I could um, you get almost a perfect background image of, a, of like a smoosh mani and this also tells you that depending on like how gently you roll over, you can get different sorts of effects. So you can get, you know, a perfect pull, or you can get a, a less than perfect pull that's going to give you a slightly more textured feel. And um, definitely play around with those after images because you can get, I mean, that's just a cool background image that you could stamp something over, and that gives you lots of texture and dimension, and you know, it's pretty gorgeous. And, uh, and let me show you that again. I mean, that's just beautiful. Even on its own, I think that's just, a, that would be a beautiful mani across your nails. So let me show you one last thing because uh, before this video gets super huge, crazy large, um, I said you can use it with other plates. So it comes with this texture plate. You get the, the three uh, templates and the texture plate, but you can use it with other plates. So here's the trick, okay? Here's what you want to watch out for. Notice that on all of these, the, the lighter polish, uh, the lighter color is where your polish is, okay? Most texture images are gonna, you know, that you normally use would look like this because that's leaving a lot of your base polish showing through. But you don't, they don't, you don't want that here because that's gonna actually help you form the shape of your template. So when you're looking for other plates to use, you want to look for polishes like that that have a lot of these broad areas. So, so for example, when I looked at this plate, I said, okay, this has a lot of that lighter space. So let me try that, and that's the one that I used. Uh, with the hearts to do this image here. So there is enough of that white showing that I could, you're going to be able to make out the, the form of the hearts, but then still get that pretty image um, inside, that texture image inside. So another um, thing I did was, so I took this plate here and I tried it out with these waves here, and this is how that image ended up looking. Uh, then I also tried that same spot with with the sunburst and I wanted to see how that was going to come out and that is how that came out and this is a beautiful batik look I think that that is just so pretty with it coming out across your nails uh, either as a background pattern or as just your full pattern and then after I s swiped this one and got this one I went again ahead with the second stamper right away and that's what I got and again notice lots of cool texture stuff that you can do here if you want to get into textures and playing with textures so play around with different kinds of images but you could do something really cool with this as well um, and try out you know if you want to try out something like this that has um, less area and see how it comes out why not you know that might be the coolest background image ever
preserver. It's just if you want to get the shape that actually shows in your template preserved, those um, images that have more of that lighter space are probably going to work out better for you. Okay, I think this is just so much fun, and I am really hoping that they come out with um, more of the texture plates and more of the um, the the templates with different kinds of shapes and things and I really love all of the different stuff how you can play around with polish on this and because you don't really have to scrape and you can just lay the template down and pick it up I think you can do a ton of really fun things here and I know it's this is going to just explode over the the interwebs and people are going to be doing some really cool things and I I've been having so much fun playing with it so I definitely recommend picking this up and playing around with it you're going to have lots of fun and you're going to have lots of beautiful results so I will link everything down including the colors I used and um, thanks for watching.